Broken champions left and right and if you're into winning most of your games then you need to take a look at the champions I'm about to show you for solo queue. And with that, welcome back to another Pro Guides Wild Rift video. So without any further ado, let's get started with our first champion. On the first slot we have Akshan in the middle lane. Akshan is a severely broken champion if you understand how to utilize this pick. So for example, whenever you're in lane you can fish for your first ability and in case you hit it in the way in and on the way out you can go in with your third ability for an insane trade. And it's almost impossible to lose thanks to your passive ability. The shield you gain is absolutely insane. Especially in the later stages of the game, this shield becomes like a barrier, but your barrier is then on a 4 second cooldown. Which means, every single time you're able to step away from a fight for a brief moment in time, you can wait for your passive to recharge itself and then go in again. This shield is going to carry so many situations you won't even believe it. And if you chain it with your normal barrier, you'll increase your effective HP by almost 50%. And then if you take into consideration that you have so much on hit damage and lie still at the same time, it gets really hard for enemies to deal with you. However, the most broken and almost most important mechanic of your champion is your third ability. Learning how to use it properly is a task that is not that easy. However, don't be like one of those action players who always rope into the enemy team fight. You are going to lose in most situations because that's not necessarily the way you need to play him. Rather think of yourself as an assassin in those situations. Don't just rope in, but wait for your opportunity to rope in to get an instant reset to either rope out or rope again after them. Because in the end, you're still an AD carry which means if you jump into them and they CC you, you get instantly blown up and that would be very terrible. And even if you let your teammates die for you, it's no problem at all because you can just revive them anyway. So think ahead and use that very smartly. Another thing you need to use smartly is Akshan's second ability, because it allows you to run around the map in stealth. So wards are basically meaningless against you and so you, therefore you can punish the enemy's unawareness and get them killed all the time. I mean, you can ask every jungler that plays the game. The moment the jungler vanishes into the fog of war, he will almost stop existing, at least in the enemy's eyes. And then you can just go there and get them killed and repeat the same process over and over again. Because as long as they don't see you, they don't sense an immediate threat of danger and, well, easy LP. And by the way, are you already subscribed to the channel? Because if not, hit the button to never miss anything of our challenger content ever again. And for our question of the day, what are your hopes for the next big patch? Because we'll still have to wait a while after the Horizon Cup. Let me know in the comments below and do it fast. And now we move on to the probably most broken champion in the current meta for the AD carry role. At least if you're in a professional environment and Kai'Sa is not always the best choice. Because in comparison to Kai'Sa, Vayne does like 10 times the damage and it doesn't matter what target she's hitting. So let's talk about Vayne for a second. Vayne scales insanely well into the later stages of the game and any defensive stats don't really matter to her thanks to her true damage. And even better is the fact that she can peel for herself if she's good enough at the game, going invisible, tumbling around and knocking the enemy away if she needs to do so. However, if one isolated enemy gets too close to the vein, well, this enemy is going to die very fast because most champions underestimate the power of an AD carry. A lot of people think that once they get on top of an AD carry they can just crush him, like the typical Camille incident. Camille jumps on top of you and she just one shots you. However, with Vayne it's a bit different. The moment you get too close to her and you're on your own without any reliable CC to one shot her, she will kill you. And it's just a matter of time, not the matter of if she's able to. And to make it even worse for you, she can build items such as Blade of the Ruined King, Charge Blade and Wit's End. This is so much damage in attack speed and also so much diverse damage in terms of different types because it's physical, magical and true damage on her part. So how do you properly itemize against this champion outside of having ninja tab eye or rather plated steel caps? And now if you add the Lulu to the mix, well, you can almost kiss your LP goodbye. And now let's move on to one of the most annoying Baron laners in this game. No Baron laner on this world wants to lane against this champion. For a simple reason, he's the most annoying and most toxic champion during the laning phase. I'm not talking about Pantheon here. And Pantheon loves to dominate the laning phase and he can do so very easily. And all of his abilities, especially when it comes to the empowered versions of it, are absolutely broken in order to stomp your opponent. 
No melee champion in this game is really allowed to walk too close to him, because whenever they do, he can just use his empowered first ability and stab them into the face. And because the stab version of this ability has barely any cooldown, he can do so every single time they move forward. And once he's done so, twice in lane, he will be able to jump into your face with his empowered second ability, recharge his passive almost instantly and get you killed from 60% to zero in an instant. On level 3 by the way. And if he's holding ignite, well he can do it even earlier. And once he gets a singular kill, you're not gonna have any fun in your lane, because he will start one-shotting you from 100 to zero whatever you do. There's nothing you can do about this unless you're a super tank anyway. And if that is the case, then there's another problem. Once Pantheon has started snowballing or realizes that he can't just dive you because you're too tanky, he can extend his lead or pressure on the map by ulting around the map, and especially dragon laners tilt super hard when they're ganked by a Pantheon. And even though you can't really do anything about it, he will still be flamed for it. But if you want to tilt him, make sure to pick up Pantheon and learn how to snowball through laning phases and get them killed on the dragon lane. Getting the enemy dragon lane tilted is almost a certain way to victory, because you all know how it goes. The moment they start tilting, they flame each other's items, plays or whatever and they are too busy chatting than playing. And once this happens, well, it's an FF angle for them and just some free LP for you. But there's one thing you have to remember, is that Pantheon's third ability doesn't block tower shots anymore. Riot made sure to remove that very fast after the champion got introduced, so sadly it doesn't work anymore. However, if it still worked, this champion would be way too broken. And now let's move on to a really broken champion, Jarvan. Jarvan can be flexed for the jungle role, the top role and the support role, however support being a more fancy pick into very certain matchups. But what makes Jarvan so good is that the fact that he's so unbelievably strong in all brackets thanks to his kit, itemization options and overall strength. For example, he will always deal damage regardless of his item choice. He can go Black Cleaver, Zeke's Convergence and an Abyssal Mask and he will still deal enough damage to get an AD carry killed unless the name of the AD Gary is Vayne. But the real takeaway of this champion is the fact that he bolsters his allies damage unbelievably well. With the Black Cleaver in combination with his first ability, he reduces the enemy's armor by a lot. If you now take into consideration that he's also buying Zeke's, which also buffs his allies damage as well as his damage while making himself tankier, you already get the idea what this champion is capable of. And if this wasn't already enough, his banner also grants attack speed to all his surrounding allies. So whatever the Jarvan does, when he itemizes smartly in a supportive way rather than selfish items, he'll just be an absolute carry even though he won't be perceived as a carry. For this exactly, I wish there were stats so we could check the items and what they actually do in the sense of how much damage and how much damage they have amplified throughout the game. Maybe in future patches we will be able to do so, but sadly we can't. However, if you don't know, on the League PC version you can check those stats and therefore make a better analysis. But if you just think about the synergistic part of his itemization and his kit, if he jumps onto the enemy with his ultimate ability, the Zeke's activates and his ally AD carry will be able to hit anyone in that cage. And on top of that, his AoE from the Zeke's will deal 60 damage per second AoE as well and apply a 50% slow. And now if you want to go into really crazy territory, what about a Zeke's Convergence, an Abyssal Mask and a Corky on your team? While well, the entirety of the enemy team is stuck in the cage with you. Just think about this and just imagine the damage you're buffing on your AD carry. And now we come to our last pick of this list. A champion that has been forgotten but is still absolutely busted in the solo queue sense, especially in the high elo bracket. However, you need to be good on this champion. And for this, we have Janna. In solo queue, Janna can basically ignore any type of laning phase by skilling her first ability and go for a perma push style. Once she is gone into that mode, she can basically rotate to any lane she wants to. Don't forget, in a solo queue environment, your AD carry is one of your weakest roles you can imagine because standalone he's not gonna do too much. However, depending on what champions you have on your team, you can play around your other teammates and get them ahead very fast. And once you've done so, you should always stick with them and make them even stronger and protect them in the future. But this is not the only thing that makes Janna so unbelievably strong. Once she gains access to her boots, this champion literally takes off and runs around the map within seconds. 
She can be anywhere she wants and she can do anything she wants to do. Especially into champions that want to hard engage into her, she can just completely block them off with her first ability and her ultimate. Nonetheless, you have to remember that Jana is a very squishy champion and if you make any kind of a mistake, you'll most likely instantly die. Which makes a lot of people stay away from her, because there are other options that are way more tankier and provide another value. But from a solo queue aspect, if I was playing completely alone, Janna is a champion that would allow me to influence any lane I want to, which is something supports usually should do. They are not forced to stay in the dragon lane, because they just pick dragon lane. Be proactive on the map and become a second jungler that doesn't have to farm. Local gold, local experience and proactive plays can accelerate not only you, but your team ahead so you win more games. And that's it for today's video. Thank you all for watching, leave a like and subscribe to the channel to never miss anything pro guides ever again. And see you around tomorrow for another video, as per usual.